Hi, great minds. Welcome back to Organo Topper Chem Clinic, your one-stop chemistry channel for smashing chemistry exam. So if you are writing WIAC or GCE, this video will save you marks in the chemistry practical exams. So in this video, we move from titration tricks to salt analysis secrets and finally to gas tests that examiners love. So stay tuned till the end because I will reveal the most repeated practical pattern that could appear again in this year chemistry practical exam. In chemistry practical exam, the three compulsory sections you must prepare for include we have the volumetric analysis, also known as the titrimetric analysis or the titration. And secondly, we have the qualitative analysis, also known as the salt analysis. And the third one is physical chemistry or observation test, whereby you conduct the gas test. Each of these sections attracts serious marks and small mistakes can cost you big. In this lesson, we are diving into one of the most guaranteed questions in every WAHEC or GC chemistry practical, which is titration. The two main titrimetric analyses that you may be tested on are we have the acid-based titration and secondly, we have the redox titration. Redox titration is the same as reduction oxidation titration all right can we set up our titration station here is what you will need a burette a pipette we need a conical flask a beaker a funnel as well as retort stand we need to identify these materials one by one can you identify your apparatus here is a burette the burette is calibrated from 0 to 50 cm cube. The upper calibration is 0, while the lower calibration is 50 cm cube. As shown on the diagram on the board, here is the burette. Okay? We also need a pipette, which in most cases we have the 25 cm cube pipette. We also have that of 20 cm cube pipette. Note that one cm cube is equivalent to one milliliter so 25 cm cube is the same as 25 milliliter and 20 cm cube is equivalent to 20 milliliter so the pipette may be in milliliter or centimeter cube right here this is in ml milliliter so we can as well use this in taking our solution during the titrometric analysis it is in the conical flask that we have our analyte in most acid-based titration the analyte is always the base so the third apparatus needed here is the conical flask which is this here is a beaker we have a beaker right here we can use the beaker to take a solution of the titrant or the analyte as the case may be we can as well use the funnel to introduce the titrant into the burette. So we introduce our titrant into the funnel so as to get it down into the what? The burette. The burette can be of different types. We can have a ball burette. Right here, I have a ball burette. There is a ball right in this tube. Okay. And we can also have a clip burette whereby you press or exact pressure on the clip then it can be in form of what a tap and finally we have our retort stand so we use the retort stand to clamp the burette so that it can stand erect or upright while running the titration so when your burette is standing upright it will help you to avoid error due to parallax can we look at this diagram closely the solution that is contained in the burette is known as the titrant. So if I have an acid in the burette, that means the acid is the titrant. So if the concentration of the titrant is known, okay, we can equally say that the titrant is the standard solution. What is standard solution? Standard solution is a solution of known concentration in a titrimetric analysis. Also, the solution that is contained in the conical flask is known as the analyte. So if I have my base in the conical flask, there is need for me to add an indicator. Okay, let's identify our indicator. 
the indicator is a dye. We need to add it to our analyte before we commence the titration. So this is a methyl orange. It is an indicator for titrometric analysis. When do we make use of a methyl orange? When we are dealing with a strong acid, strong base, we can use a methyl orange as indicator. Also, when we are dealing with strong acid, weak base, we can as well make use of what methyl orange as indicator. Why do we add this indicator to our analyte? Because it can be observed that the solution of the titrant, which may be the acid, is colorless. And also the solution of the analyte, which may be our base, is as well colorless. So in titrometric analysis, when you are making use of a colorless titrant, and a colorless analyte you need an indicator why do we have this indicator so as to identify the color change which will lead us to the end point for the titrometric analysis you have to note that in most work or gc chemistry practicals the acid solution that is mostly used is hydrochloric acid while the alkaline solution that is mostly used is sodium hydroxide now the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and also the sodium hydroxide is a strong base so in an instance whereby you are dealing with strong acid strong base titration any indicator is suitable such as the methyl orange indicator and the phenolphthalein indicator but in this titration we are going to be making use of methyl orange indicator now the methyl orange indicator has its orange color when it is added to the analyte which is the sodium hydroxide it changes from orange to yellow and eventually when an acid is introduced further it changes towards a light pink we are going to demonstrate that in this video lesson so you follow me and you watch closely so in this standard volumetric flask i have my sodium hydroxide so I'm going to introduce it into the beaker right here. Then I'm going to pipette the solution of our base. Here is our pipette. Right here, I will ensure that it is at the 25 mil or 25 centimeter cube meniscus. So we have to reduce this. Okay. So if we look at this closely, it is, it is at the meniscus, the brown meniscus right here. That's 25 mil or 25 cm cube for the pipette. So the next thing is to introduce it into the conical flux right here. So I have a dry conical flux right here. The conical flask has been rinsed with the solution of the base. Also, before I clamp the burette, I actually rinsed it with the solution of the acid. So the solution to be introduced into the burette is what we use to rinse the burette. While the solution that we have to pipette is required to rinse the conical flask. So I have my base right here in the conical flask. So the next procedure is to add two to three drops of our methyl orange so i have methyl orange indicator right here one two three so i've been able to add three drops of the methyl orange into my base in the conical flux so the next thing is to remove the funnel before you start titrating so that you don't have extra drop into the solution in the burette okay so we can kick start our titration since we have the indicator in the analyte and we have our titrant in the burette our titrant is the hydrochloric acid while the analyte is the sodium hydroxide okay so we continue to add in drop and let me increase the height of the burette so that you can see it clearly we continue to add the acid from the burette into the conical flask containing the sodium hydroxide until we observe a color change 
and at first you're going to observe the appearance and disappearance of light pink color as you are adding the acid into the what the sodium hydroxide so let's continue our titration you mix vigorously as you are titrating you ensure that you mix vigorously so we'll continue the process until we observe a color change okay so i'll continue to add the acid from the bread drop wisely i'll start seeing the appearance and disappearance of light pink coloration so i will continue to add in drop i'm adding drop wisely now so i'm seeing appearance and disappearance so you have to look at it closely okay so i'm checking it on the white slab right here wow we have our light pink coloration okay can you see that closely so since i've obtained the light pink coloration right here this is a perfect color change okay so this is what is expected of you in the exam so i have my light pink coloration and the next thing is to take my reading okay from the burette so right here i'm having 11.5 so in typometric analysis you have to record the volume of acid used or volume of the titrants used to two decimal places the 11.5 from the burette will be written as 11.50 cm cube okay makes sense note that when the acid in the bread is added in excess this is the color change that you're going to obtain so this is wrong for your titrometric analysis okay what we are expected to have is a light pink color change note that in this section of the titrometric analysis also known as the titration we've been able to conduct four different titration the first titration is the rough titer while the other three titration will be taken as our main titer value. The reason why we have a rough titer is because the solution of the acid tends to fill the lower part of the jets, okay? Why the first titration, second titration, and the third titration is based on the fact that we need to get our concordant value. Concordant value is achieved when you have a 0.1 difference between your readings okay plus or minus 0.1 so for this experiment we are going to make use of the table right on the screen we have the rough tighter first tighter second tighter and the third tighter and we are expected to make use of what you need all our measurement is in centimeter cube so we've been able to express the correct unit for each of the value for the first tighter second tighter and the third tighter when taking the average tighter value we are not going to make use of the rough tighter so our focus will be on the concordant value if the three titrations are concordant we can pick the three values why in an instance whereby we have just two concordant value we can use the two concordant value for our averaging after coming up with the table for our titration, the next step is to consider the calculation aspect. Now let's undo the calculation aspect where most students lose marks. In this section of our titrometric analysis, I will show you how to calculate the concentration of unknown solution. So for ordinary level exam like the WAHEC and the GCE, we can adopt this formula to determine the concentration of unknown solution. We can make use of the formula CA VA over CB VB equals NA over NB. CA VA represent the concentration and volume of the acid, while CB VB also represent the concentration and volume of the base used. The NA is the number of mole of the acid from the stoichiometric equation right here why the nb is the number of mole of the base from this stoichiometric equation right here we have the balanced equation for the titrometric analysis right here i have the hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to give sodium chloride and water at what mole ratio we have ratio one to one one mole of the acid which is hcl reacts with one mole of the base which is the what the sodium hydroxide note that for most advanced level examination 
we cannot apply the formula CAVA over CBVB plus NA over NB. So I'm going to show you the best approach to answering the titrimetric analysis question for advanced level students in my next video lesson. Note that before we can proceed with the calculation on the acid-base titration, there is need for every student to watch my video lesson on stoichiometry as well as the more concepts where we discuss balancing of chemical equation the mole to mole relationship for the reactants and also the conversion of mole to mass so in the stoichiometry you are going to learn how to balance chemical equation how to determine the mole ratio for the reactants and also in stoichiometry you will learn how to convert mole to mass in a chemical reaction so make sure you watch this video lesson so i want to believe that in this video lesson i've made titration easy for your WAEC and gce chemistry practical examination remember accuracy is key practice before the exam and always write neatly with logical results if you found this video lesson helpful hit the like button subscribe and share to help other students ace their chemistry practical examination stay tuned for the next episode where i will break down the titration calculation step by step and watch out for the tricks and tips to hamstring the titration calculation See you in the next video.